of the stadium acknowledge me. Hello everyone and welcome to Kick It to Scoops. I'm your host, Cooper, the soul admin of AFL information, trade rumors and results, and poof. What a loaded show for you guys and girls today we have on Kick It to Scoops. Well, 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 what a round of football it was, ladies and gentlemen. It was a very, very interesting round, to say the least. I mean, we had rounds of results, you know, that were expected, and quite frankly, I'm not surprised by. Uh, We had a few, I wouldn't say massive upsets, but like some surprises. I'm going to go through all that and many, many more. I'm going to go through my super coach team and made some trades. Maybe the boost, first boost trade of the year may be used already, mainly due to bloody injuries in the whole back line, which we'll get to very shortly, and players underperforming there. Um, we obviously have this world-famous segment, Scooter's Bang, which is going to start the show with a bang, and multiple things I'm going to be banging on about. Two meter Peter suspension. Max King being suspended for what the hell for? Um... That and many, many more we're going to be talking about. St. Kilda are appealing it too, so what well, I'm saying because if you didn't, there was going to be a roasting coming your way. Now, also, we'll start off with this. You want me on Cameo? Head to cameo.com forward slash Cooper G. You want me to roast a friend, wish someone a happy birthday, anything at all that's respectful, cameo.com forward slash Cooper G. Um, also, if you know any AFL, AFLW plays, any up-and-coming draftees from the men's and women's side, or any waffle sample W girls as well, or men, if you'd love to see on the podcast in a goal kicking challenge or an interview, please send me a message on Instagram at AFL Info Live. Uh, try and get something sorted. I would greatly appreciate if you know anyone or if you are someone that plays in those leagues or a future draftee, I'd love to be on the podcast. Um, send me a message on Instagram, preferably AFL Info Live. There is the banner. Right there for you all. All right, let's just you know get right to the thick of things. Let's start off with the world famous segment. Scoops goes bang. Wow, what am I going to be banging on about? The Saints beat the Pies. Flag Pies have been beaten. The reigning premiers have been beaten by my Sainers. Uh, I had full faith in them. Yes, I tipped Collingwood. I know, but. I went the safe option, but I'm so bloody proud of my guys to win Spud's game, first of all, uh, honouring the late Danny Frawley, who was a Ripper person I've had the privilege of meeting once. Um, And, yeah, Ripper guy. And um, to honour his legacy and to have a great win and a great career, 69,000 just over at the MCG for the Saints Pies on a Thursday night. Um, We're normally not good in games that are big for the club in terms of Honouring Spud, obviously, Maddie's match. Saints had won many games against Richmond since that was a thing. Uh, won a few recently, of course, for the Saints in Maddie's match. is great against the Tigers. And now to win, I think, the second time now, a Spud's game. So, great to see. Um, but, yeah, it was good to see a lot of the AFLW girls there, you know, before the game outside the venue doing stuff for the club in terms of the Daddy Frawley Centre. So it was great to see. But to meet Georgia Patrikios again. Uh, Rupert, speaking of Georgia, Nat Exxon as well. Um, Alice Burke, Berkey, and Rebecca Ott as well. So great meeting those girls from the Sainers. So appreciate all four of them. Um, yeah, ripping people. It's good to have a nice chat. For some good laughs as well. But, uh, yeah. It was a great chat meeting them and obviously donating now. I'm not boasting about donating to this thing. I'm it's not all I'm not about boasting, but if you because I'm sure people are gonna be asking, did I donate and not, not just take photos with the girls? No, I did donate as well. Don't need to say how much because I'm not here to boast or anything. It's just because I know some people may be asking if I did. So yes, I did, just for people that do ask. All right. Now, I'm in Scoot Space Bang, so let's talk about something I'm gonna get angry about. Now, what I'm gonna get angry about is people saying that St Kilda won the game because of the umpiring. You could not be more bloody wrong. Craig McRae, their coach, a ripper guy who I've had on the podcast twice, said, you know, there were some acts, you know, where they were undisciplined, a bit clumsy, you know, bump. And what I saw, and if you have a brain, saw that, you know, they'll bump plays behind play, 
It's like after they d- kick the ball and they just bump and the whistle blows, it's a free kick. So, or they bump someone, we mark it, and it's paid a free anyway. Like, and the tally goes up. Now, were all the frees there? Probably not. There's some we didn't get as well. Yeah, we got more free kicks by a fair bit than normal. But no one doesn't say nowhere does it say in the rule book that it has to be equal. Now, how many times do I say to you all, it's not the number. It's what's given and what's not given and where. That is the major thing. But if they're there and they're in front of the goals, they're there. We weren't gifted the game from umpiring. We dominated the pies and we deserved that victory. Now, people are going to keep continuously crying about the umpiring and the Jack Higgins scenario with the boundary line. Goal of the year, my man, Jack Higgins. Absolutely phenomenal. If you haven't seen that clip, it's on my Instagram page and Facebook page. Go check some of my most recent Instagram reels, AFL Info Live, as I said. And Jack Higo, goal of the year times two. Let's find out. Now, the goal in question that people are bitching and moaning about, it was in. It was in. Higo, and I understand Higo said that it wasn't in, but I think he was pressured to say that. Higo loves to say some funny things to stir people up. Uh, this is the photo. Now, let me get the banner off for just a sec. Now, people are going to say, oh, my God, Scoops, the whole ball's out, champ. Well, well, if I look at that photo, and I tell you right now, that looks out of bounds, okay? But the point of the matter is here, apparently there's a rule where the fo- you can see he goes foot is on the line. On the line is okay. Now, the board, yes, it doesn't look over. If you look at dimensions and lines, and no, I did not make this up. This is legit, apparently. That because he goes foot is on the ball, it is where his foot or leg is. That's where the it would class if it's out or not, not where the ball is. The ball's landing on his foot, which is on the line. So if people want to bitch and moan about that, well, quite frankly, cry me a river. Cry me a river. It's a goal. It was given a goal, and it's got to be goal of the year right now, by far. Jeremy Cameron, who? So I said in the clip, in terms of the goal of the year that they carried on about last week, well, that, my friends, is goal of the year. That's not an insult. That's just a fact of life. Yeah, that is really goal of the year. Oh, I knew he'd go. Love it, mate. And I was every goal kicking challenge. Every shot I do from the left flank is a snap around the body in honor of Higo. He loves those goals, loves those kicks. I nailed them. Higo, just like you, my friend. And great goal. Goal of the year. Higo! As I said in the clip, love it. I knew he'd go. And I know, I know for a fact he saw it, and I know he loves it. Thanks, Higo. And good on you, mate. What well, great game Higo had on the weekend. Now, Let's get to the tribunal incidents. Uh, Maxi King, the man they call Winx. Absolute great guy, gun player, gun footballer. I, I'll be honest. Um, I thought the little hit on McRae, Finn McRae, from Maxi King was a bit unnecessary. It was a bit clumsy. Um, he didn't need to do it. He does do that bit, when I think, when he's frustrated. He gets triple teamed all the time. Or the delivery is shit to him sometimes and he gets frustrated. But I think King's just going to, you know, get that stuff out of his game if he can, hopefully. Because it gets him into the positions here where now he's temp- technically right now being suspended. And we don't want to miss Kingy for instance like that. And quite frankly, it's clumsy. It's probably a free kick. Um, but suspension, give me a break. Don't give me this bullshit. Oh, he hit him on the head. No, he didn't. The AFL's freaking description of the incident says near the neck, around here. Last time I checked, your head is not on your neck. It's attached, but it's not on your neck. Your head is not here. Your head is here. And maybe some people in the AFL and community don't know how to use this part of their body, their brain. It is not worth nothing. The tribunal hearing tomorrow night. Saints have finally appealed it today. Thank Christ they did. Otherwise, it would have gone on them for not appealing it. Finally, they got some common sense there. Not worrying about their pay pocket here. Max King, gun player, doesn't deserve a damn thing. Simple. Zero. Zero. Now, anyone who thinks he deserves a week for that, you're kidding yourself. And you're just a Saints hater. So, pipe down. Lay down the pipe. Stop talking shit. Uh... Um, yeah. So just, just cut the crap out. Seriously, it is worth nothing. It should be nothing. And I tell you right now, King gets suspended at the tribunal and it doesn't get 
downgraded to a fine or nothing, you bet your bottom dollar, like top dollar, that you'll hear from me. That's not an insult. That's just a fact of life. Yeah. And I'll tell you right now, you will all be acknowledging me as the one master if he gets off. Well, you should be acknowledging me regardless. Then, now, forever, together, all the time. But I'm the tribal chief. I am the head of the table. Now, to me to Peter, Peter Wright. Personally, I'm glad that Peter Wright got suspended. And I hope that Harry Cunningham's okay. But, again, now, I don't like Essendon. It's well documented. I don't like the Bombers. But I think Peter Wright should be getting zero. Now, you want to know why he should be getting zero? Now, yes, I fully understand how the AFL is these days and how soft people are these days. Unfortunately, it's just a football incident, and unfortunately, Cunningham got concussed. What the hell was Peter Wright meant to do? Now, I've got nothing against Peter Wright. I just don't like Essendon. And I'm telling you right now, it should be zero. I know it's not zero. I know it's been sent to the tribunal so we can only three. But quite frankly, he deserves zero. Zero. Harry Cunningham made that contact happen. Unfortunately, what happened to Cunningham, I like Harry Cunningham as well, just for the record, but that's Harry Cunningham's fault that happened. That wouldn't have happened had he come in from that angle. What was Peter Wright meant to do? Go, oh, oh, there's a play coming. I'm not going to suspend. I'll be a little pussy and get out of the way. You really think that Brad Scott would be thrilled if if Peter Wright did the opposite of what he did and pussied out of the contest? I tell you what, he'd be getting roasted by the media, the ones, same ones that are criticising him now for doing that. What the hell was Peter Wright meant to do? Pussy out? That's the only thing he could have done and he would have got ridiculed by Brad Scott, his teammates, his fans, the AFL, the media, or the media. Like, what the hell is he meant to do? Yeah, he deserves zero. I'm glad he's suspended so he doesn't have to play against us because if we miss Max King, I certainly don't want them having Peter Wright. Um, but look, ridiculous i knew look i know how the ruling is now the game changing and blah 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 but that should be zero as well but it's not he doesn't play against us so that's good max king better get a lot off to the afl with you litigation or whatever the word is they use and all this money in lawsuits for you know about concussion if they can sue the afl and all this shit unbelievable unfortunately the cunningham incident was his own fault. Paddy McCartan, you want to reference old history concussions? Paddy McCartan, you know, should have retired after when he had like five knocks. He had like seven or ten. His choice to keep playing. Sydney didn't force him to play. Saints didn't force him to play. Saints, in fact, let him go pretty much because they just didn't want that problem anymore with the concussions. Sydney and McCartan finally come to the conclusion recently. You've had other players retire. Angus Brayshaw, unfortunately, had so many. And just for clarity, I hope these guys are all well. But Angus Brayshaw retiring had nothing to do with Braden Maynard. That was just like the nail in the coffin, like that was the next incident. It wasn't solely that incident that retired Andy Ang Angus Brayshaw. Okay? Still people to this day blaming Maynard for this. Like, seriously, grow up. It was a history of knocks from Angus Brayshaw, Paddy McCartan, and and there was someone else. Did I just say someone else? So there was others as well. And Nathan Murphy also has been wanting to play. Apparently his parents had a meeting with the Pies recently. I think Eddie Maguire said this, and they want to play. And his parents, I think, are happy with him playing. So if something was happening to him and he had to force to retire if he did come back and got another knock, I'm sorry, that's on him. The club's not forcing him to play. If that's the case, then that's a different story. But even then, Nathan says, no, I'm not playing. I don't care what you want. That's it. So I hope it doesn't happen to someone like Nathan Murphy or anyone. But I just don't like how this money thing can be thrown out as a way to tell out the club's Watch out or we want money off you. Come on. Be real. If the player decides to keep playing through their head knocks, continuous ones, Jai Simpkins had three in a year. Unfortunately, if Jai ever gets another one recently or any time in his future, he has to retire off it. He's had three in a 12-month period. 
So then if you have the problem of, oh, he's going to have a, going to want money off the AFL or North in Jai's case, if that was to happen, I'm sorry. You chose to keep playing unless you show otherwise. You know, bad luck. Uh, I've, I've, yeah, I just don't get it. Paddy McCartan is probably the one with the most knocks that I can think of top of my head right now. I should have retired well into it. He had, and I, knowing who Matty McCartan was, he'd been in from the same area as me. He had plenty of concussions before he made the AFL. He had, I think he had three in, jun in junior footy in Geelong. Like three at that point. And then he had seven after he finished the St Kilda, I think, and maybe 10 or 11 or 12 after Sydney. It's just like, when is it enough? Like, yeah, okay, I'm... I'm this is not even the topic I was trying to bring up, but you know, you get my point. And to those people, lift your game. Pathetic. AFL are soft when it comes to suspensions. They're weak. Where was Dangerfield? If Dangerfield, if Dangerfield did what Peter Wright did, would Paddy Dangerfield be sent to the tribunal? You bet your bottom dollar that he would be paying top dollar. Do not get suspended. They might slap. Oh, Paddy, come on, mate. We've got to give you a week. Uh, blah, blah. You wouldn't be sending Paddy, Paddy Danger to the tribunal. How dare you do that to the man, the people, um, the, ma the people's people. I mean, he's not the people's champ. There's only one people's champ, and that's Dwayne the Rock Johnson. And there's only two tribal chiefs, me and Roman Reigns. But, you know, like, seriously, come on. Lift your game. Pathetic. Hope you guys enjoy that long edition of the world famous segment. Scoops goes bang. Alrighty, okay, let's go through. Oh, here we go. Everyone loves this segment. It is time for my AFL team of the week. Oh, we love we love the team of the week. I know you all love the team of the week very much. So, hmm, let's read it from the back line. The pockets. James Sicily and Josh Battle. Fullback, Sam Collins. Our back line, the flankers, Nasaya Wanganine Malira. The flanker, Harry Sheasel. Centre half back, Tom Stewart. Wingers, Zach Merritt and Zach Butters. Centerman, Isaac Heaney. Half forward line, the flank is Jade Gresham and Tom, Tom Papley. Centre half forward, Bailey Fritch. Forward pockets, Jack, Jack, Jack. Did I say Jack? Jack Higgins. Ryan Myers. Full forward, all hail the king, Max King. Ruckman, Kieran Briggs. Rovers, Matt Crouch. And Caleb, so wrong, so right. Interchange, Marcus, him, Winhager, Tom Powell, Took Miller, Cody Whiteman, and Tom, Tom, Tom Green. The long list of emergencies, Lockie Whitfield, Jeremy McGovern. Liam Baker, Todd Marshall, Rowan Marshall, Josh Weddle, Oscar Baker, Mitch Owens, Willem Drew, Connor Iden, Harvey Thomas, and Sam Taylor. There it is. There is my team of the week. Let me know your thoughts. Reason Sicily. 15 disposals at quarter time with nine marks. That was a locked finish. He could finish with 23 disposals or so and probably still make it. He finished with 28, 27, so he deserved it. Sam Collins, despite some of the Bulldogs key fours, not having the biggest names of the Waitman show at, at, in Ballarat, uh, deserved a spot, did really well. Josh Battle was probably the best player on the ground in the Saints game, if not the next best. Uh, he was bloody good. Over 20 disposals, like 13 marks. He was freaking awesome. If you watch the game, you know. I mean, I've never been... a Big fan of key defenders outside of a few, but Josh Battle's Josh Battle's game really impressed me. He's intercept marked intercept marking. He's running carries, kicking, which sometimes lets him, lets him down. 
He was bloody good, Josh Battle. I was really proud of Josh Battle. I think that's probably one of his best ever games at the club. The side wagon in Miller, back to back, great games for the season for him. Naz, as people call him. I mean, you could have forgiven him, I suppose, for his good mate Mason Wood having that horrific uh, injury, which could have got worse than it was. Or Mason Wood, all the best, my man, Mace. Uh, Naz, obviously, a good house mate and mate of his. Could have gone in his shell and, you know, gone quiet, but he freaking delivered and stood up for his mate and did freaking well. 32 disposals, high efficiency. His run and ball carry was awesome. Tom Stewart, the best player for Geelong and probably in that game as well. Harry Sheasel, again, like Stewart, was freaking awesome. Over 30 disposals, probably the best player in that game as well. Zach Merritt, uh, two goals, 32 disposals. What else? Yes, they lost, but who cares? He was good individually. Isaac Keaton, another great game, a bunch of clearances, score involvements, disposals and goals. Zach Butters, two goals, 34 disposals. He was the lock. Jake Gresham having a great start of his Bombers career. He's my man, Gresh. Three goals, 24 disposals. It was a lock. Bailey Fritch kicked five. Tom Papley, three in like 25 touches. It was a lock. Jack Higgins, four goals, like 16 touches, and probably the game changer or one off at the Saints. Maxie King, three goals, 16 disposals, like eight, 10 marks. He was a bloody lock. Brian Myers kicked three goals or so, 26 odd disposals. It was a lock. Freaking amount of big possession getters and goals for the uh, uh, forwards this week. Uh, Kieran Briggs, one of the best ruckman for the round. Uh, had 23 disposals, I think it was. Destroyed young Harry Barnett. And Bailey Williams played in the ruck in the last quarter only. Uh, Matt Crouch, over 30, to, over 30 to touches, was a lock. Caleb Sarong, the same. Marcus Him Winhager. Marcus Winhager is him. Uh, had over 20 disposals, but. You add on top of that, he destroyed Nick Dacos. So he had like 16 touches. He did nothing. So, what on you, he go? I mean, oh, what on do you he go to? But Marcus Winhager was bloody awesome as well. Tom Powell, two goals, 28 disposals. He was terrific. Uh, was a lock in the team. Tuke Miller, over 30 disposals. He was terrific. Tom Green, around 34 disposals, was great for the Giants and a kick to goal, I think. And Cody Waitman, now you can say, Scoops, he kicked six. You can't put him on the bench. Four of them were in the first quarter, and he kind of went missing out of that, and a few were out the back. Still bloody good. Still probably the best on the ground, but, you know, it is what it is, and I've got Cody Waitman there, and those long list of emergencies, you can see who uh, play what position. They were the next options in those positions. So keep an eye out for that. Um, yeah, so just, yeah. Uh, that's my team of the week. Please comment down below what you think, um, and, yeah, and we'll go to the next topic now, which is indeed... Ooh, let's you know what? Let's go through my super coach team. Right, let's go through now, right now, my super coach team. Uh some interesting players this week. Top eighteen players for this round just gone and for this round coming. Obviously Gold Coast and GWS have the buys this week. So if you've got any players for them, put them on the bench if you can. Uh and make sure you have eighteen players. But yeah, so um, yeah, so that's my super coach team. Um, well, we're going to go through that now. So, I mean, 1887, I think, is what I scored. 1889 is what I scored. You know, it's 18 places. I said. So it's okay. I mean, it's not great, but it is what it is. I'm now in the top 37 percent, which is a bit disappointing. Um, I can put that down to some of the injuries. I had Nick Caulfield scoring three. Uh, Nick Dacos scoring in the 50s. Um, Riley Bonner getting 49. Uh, you know, there's a lot of players you can put that down to. And I nailed the captaincy with Tom Green. He did bloody well, as he always does. It was a reliable option, as he's got the buy this week, which is a bit annoying for my captaincy-wise, uh, which I'm looking at Petrarca and Laird. They're the two names that come to my top of my head at the moment. Nick Dacos as well, but he plays the first game of the round against Brisbane, so it's a bit of a loophole option there. Uh, but, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. But, yeah, it's... You'll see now, I have currently done two trades. I've obviously got Gipkiss and Reed on the bench, but now it's Caulfield's out. I've got Hayden Young I want to dump out. So as of right now, what I've done is I will use the boost trade, but I haven't officially done my third trade yet because I'm just umming and ahhing between a certain player that I want to bring in or if I want to take a certain player out, like what the gamble is between that, or if I want to use this money that I've currently got for this third trade, do I want to upgrade a player from another position? And this is the players I've gone with. That I've officially done. I've got Toby Pink into the team, 
along with Massimo D'Ambrosio. I've taken out Josh Gibkiss and Hayden Young out. High break even to like 167, Hayden Young has, so I've taken him out. Um, just not dealing with that. I never wanted him in the first place. A lot of people jumped on it, so I thought he could be a safe bet for 100, but I guess not. And now, so I've dumped him before he dropped 60K. Um, so if you got Hayden Young, I'd be getting rid of him unless you're keeping him all year. Um, Massimo Dean Broser, I mean, 200 odd K, but he's doing bloody well. Averaging over 187 last game. So, yeah, that's who I've got. I'm looking, yeah, I'm not telling you who I'm looking at trading up or down to use that 376,900. So, obviously, in the back line, as you can see there, James Sicily, Nick Dacos, Harry Sheasel, Massimo Dean Brosio, Blake Howes, and Toby Pink is coming for Gipkis. Zach Reed and Koff are on the bench for now. I mean, I really could just put another rookie, get rid of Zach Reed and use that money next week and assess my options after that again. But we'll have to wait and see. I'm more than likely going to upgrade someone now with that cash, um, despite the two trades I've done already. And maybe use Dean Brosio as my D4 for the upcoming rounds. Nothing to do with the buy round, just in general. I feel like if he's scoring 100, it might be the way to go. So the midfield, as you can see there, Petrarca, Captain Rory Laird for now. Connor Rosie, Riley Bonner. Uh, let me get rid of that banner for a second. Colby McKercher, Riley Sanders, jo Jeremy Sharp, and Joy Clark. That's for now. Obviously, this is heading into this round, keep in mind. It's not what I had last round. So obviously, Tom Green and Tuke Miller will be on the field for Clark and Sharp. But obviously, the, the buy and Harvey Thomas is bloody good. Now, I'm glad I picked him. Underrated part of the Giants. Academy, I think he was. Um, bloody underrated pick. I think he's doing really well. So for Spotify and Apple Podcast listeners, I'll read it again. The back line, Jeremy, uh, Sicily, Dacos, Sheasel, D'Ambrosio, Howes and Pink. Bench, Reed and Caulfield. Midfield's on the field for this round. Petrarca, Laird, Rosie, Bonner, McKercher, Sanders, Jeremy Sharp and Jai Clark. Bench for now as because uh, of the buys. Tom Green, Took Miller and Harvey Thomas. Now the back line, uh, sorry, the rucks are Still Gorn and Marshall. All right, let's go to the next page here. Uh, yep, then Carolyn Livingston is on the bench. Loophole option again. Forwards are Zach Fisher, Harley Reid, Darcy Wilson, Seth Campbell, Harvey Gallagher, Sean Manor, and bench as they got the bye this round, Sam Flanders and Alex Sexton. Um, obviously, Flanders and Sexton would be on the field for Campbell and Gallagher when there's no buys. So... Yeah, I'm umming and ahhing as I said in other positions. I'm not going to tell you what um, because I'm not giving everything away. I've already given you three quarters of what I'm doing away, if not 95% of it. So there's that 5%, 10% I'm not telling you about. But that's what I'm doing. Let me know your thoughts down below on your team and my team. And as I said, that trade will happen, that third trade. I'm just umming and ahhing between a few options. So that's why, you know, you can't have that money left over. No, I'm not planning to. I'm just still umming and ahhing myself. And quite frankly, if I did do it, I wouldn't want to show you. So the trade that I'm doing. So, yeah, well, my thoughts, I'll be leaving it to myself. No one else. But there you go. I've given you more than what I want to. So you can thank me for being loyal to you all. So that's what I've done. Comment down below what you would do. And, yeah, let me know how you're going. Any questions you got trade-wise, send me a message on Instagram, preferably. Hey, follow for a live if you want to have a chat about it. So, right, let's now go preview round two games. All right, so now round two has started at the MCG in Spuds game. As I said, St Kilda defeated the Pies by 15 points. Owen, Owen who? Owen three are those Pies. Saints are one and one. They just beat the reigning premiers at their home ground on a Thursday night at the MCG Spuds game. As I said earlier, what a freaking win. Marcus Winhager is him. Destroyed Nick Dagos, tagged him out of the game. Uh, King, Higgins, Membry up forward with Dynamite. Um, Mitch Owens is terrific. Wanganee Malira, Battle, Wilkie down in the back line. Sinclair in his return game did fine. It All round, great team performance. Ron Marshall in the ruck, as always, he's bloody good. Um, around 20 disposals as well for Rowe. Uh, there was not really any quite contributors. Ronnie Burns, Ryan Burns in his 50th game did really well as well. Over 20 touches. Probably, probably he won a of his top few games in his 50-game career. You know what's funny, too? The AFL Cal Toomey, the so-called expert right now, he's, he knows what he does with trade and draft, and I appreciate the work he does, despite him being a bit uh, interesting when it comes to not claiming claiming exclusive for things that 
someone I got first, and he won't admit to when he checked it out. When I was no, he checked it out. Liam Shields, remember that? Uh, Luke Bruce, remember that? When Jedros Ranch a couple of years ago, I posted that the night before. Then Cal, the day after, on the day of deadline day, he's posted about and says an exclusive. Yeah, Cal, I know I got it first still, and I know to this day that you know that too, and that's on an inside, my friend. That's just affected life. Yeah, acknowledge me as being first and the one trouble chief. Um, but yeah, Cal wrote this article going, and the head of Nick Davis' 50th game saying all these highlights. This is the top 49 moments of his career, or 50 moments of his 50 game career. I'm thinking, oh, yeah, here we go, more sucking up to Dave Goss, like they do and the commentators do to Bon and Pellin. That sucking up to those two is absolutely insanely ridiculous. You know, Dave Goss is a gun, but like, for God's sakes, it's 50 games. Seb Ross played 200. Where's his freaking article? Travis Boat just played game 350. One on Trav and Sebby. Two great players for their clubs in the competition as well. Where was their bloody recognition all week? I'm not sucking up to Nick Dacos day in and day out. It's just embarrassing. I'm sure Nick doesn't want it, doesn't like it. Same with Bonham Pelly, the same. It's just like, it's absolutely the dick riding from commentators is absolutely insane and is embarrassing. You know, on the weekend, Bonham Pelly hurt his knee and or, or whatever, his ankle. He was just standing maybe a cramp or a bit sore and he'll be back on in a few minutes. Compton's like, oh, no. Like he's done his ACL. Give me a bloody spell. Dermot Burden and Brad Johnson. The dick riding from you two on the weekend was absolutely embarrassing. Like seriously. Embarrassing. So, yeah. Um. So, anyway, the highlight. Go back to what I was saying. The highlights for Nick Dagos' 50th game, I'm sure uh, – you can't really say there was any highlights in his 50th game. You might have to do another bloody article, Cal. But the thing is, though, mate, you won't have anything to write for his 50th game unless you're writing the following sentence. Marcus Winhager beat Nick Dacos in his 50th game. So when Windy gets a milestone game, I want you to do an article for 50 bloody reasons as to why he is him. Destroyed Winhager. Winhager destroyed Nick Dacos. Previous year's Lockie Neal, Luke Shuey, and plenty, plenty more. Where is his credit? And Ronnie Burns had a better 50th game than what Nick Dacos did. Cal and crew that suck up all the time. Where's his article, champ? The Brahma Bull. And you're Ronnie, Ryan Burns, and Marcus Winhager is him. Ronnie Windy and Ryan Burns. Now, oh, those things I mentioned were fantastic. I loved it. Liam Henry was good. Unfortunately, Liam Henry's going to be out for six to eight weeks with a hamstring strain. Not good. He had kicked two goals, I think, and he had a good game himself. Mason Wood, the horrific concussion and broken collarbone. He'll miss about six weeks. So wish Woody all the best and Liam as well. And we'll see them both back in the ground six to eight weeks' time for both of them. Uh, the wing spots will be interesting. Riley Bonner will probably push there. Sings may play more mid. Philippo may get pushing it onto a wing. Uh, we got options. Um, players get moved from other positions. Ari Showmaker could, could come in. They could push Wanganee Malira there. Uh, Brad Hill plays there as well. So they got op Saints got options. Showmaker can go back. Malira can go to the wing with Hill. They'll work something out. Um, they will. Ross, the boss, is up and about. He worked the pies, and the pies are on three. Jamie Elliott was good. But no one asked for the pies, really. I don't think any of them bothered to turn up, to be honest. And it's pretty embarrassing, to be honest, if you ask me. Craig has got to get them going. Ah, uh, that hangover is real, I think, now. It's like they don't give a shit. Jamie Elliott tried hard and probably, uh, yeah, he tried hard. Is this the day, the week, that Joe Richards makes his debut? I watched the Saints VFL game, Sandringham against the Pies. thought Joe Richards stood up in that position. Is, it, is Craig going to make a statement and drop someone like Bobby Hill or someone because they need to change it up to Goey, side bottom, not doing well. Penabry's doing okay, but like they get Craig gonna. I feel Craig's making a statement this week for this Easter Thursday clutch against the Lions Thursday night at the Gabba. I just see it. I think Craig would do something with this team selection. 77 96 Adelaide and Geelong. Geelong got the win, got the job done, but it wasn't how you would have thought they won. They they won because they played well, of course, but Grime Myers was probably their best player and Tom Stewart, but in game, well done, Tom Short to his 150th game as well. Um, but yeah, I thought and felt that Adelaide's missed opportunities 
Chris Burgess, the Berg man, my man Chris Burgess from the Suns, and a man my channel who goes for Gold Coast said he loves the Berg man. Obviously went to the Crows. Um, missed some ten meters out in a crucial moment in the game. Darcy Fogarty in the last quarter embarrassed himself missing ten meters out. He was he's just worse than Burgess's, by the way. Um, yeah, costly mistakes. They dropped a lot of marks in the last quarter going inside fifty. Riley O'Brien dropped one around four, 50 out. You know, just moments there. And Geelong capitalised on it. It's a disappointing for the Crows. Brad, uh, Brad Crouch. He, hopefully he'll be back. Him and Dan Butler for the Saints this week. Replace Wood and Henry. You bet your bottom dollar on that. That should happen. If not, I'll be shocked. Ari might come in as well. But, yeah, it's an interesting one. Um, and see what they have to do there. The selection of Saints. And then Adelaide. Where do they go to from here? Nick's just got a comment extension recently. Just long year ago, one recently at the Dockers. So, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. But Geelong, unfortunately, got the win and fair enough to in the end. But wasn't those missed opportunities. We could see what would happen. Now, North Melbourne and Frio, North 76, Frio 102. North Melbourne were up by 32 points, okay, and then lost by 26. A 58-point turnaround. That is unacceptable. I don't care if you're the youngest team, whatever. People go, oh, screws, but they were up by 32. Give them some credit, mate. At that point, I did. And from then on, they just rolled over. It's like, ah, flip it. We, you know, we won. We won the quarter. We won by this much. How proud are we? Fa la 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 this. That was a disgrace. An embarrassment. And that proved how bad North Melbourne on the field are. Bad. Gun plays like Sheasel, McKercher, Dozma, and Larky. What the hell else is there? Not much else. Oh, Aldi, you Luke Davis Uniac. Jane Stevenson. Other than that, there's not much going for the North Melbourne Football Club. Not good enough. Where's Will Phillips stuck in the twos? There's some players in there. I'm not going to name them. They should not be playing AFL right now. We've had ever again. But they are. Um Yeah. It's embarrassing. I don't get free arrow aren't that good. Free arrow if at best, will be finishing around eighth. So that's an embarrassing effort. They rolled over big time, and people were crying, oh, they didn't roll over. Yes, they did. It was embarrassing, and I would be embarrassed as a North fan to be up by 32 points and lose that lead within a quarter, basically. That is embarrassing, and to, yeah, it's just disgraceful, embarrassing, pathetic. Right. Now, next game. Let's go through to the next game. Hawks 38, Melbourne 93. Talk about embarrassing. The Hawthorne Football Club embarrassed themselves big time. This talk of, you know, top eight is dead and buried. They're belonging down near the bottom if they keep this up. Not as bad as North and West Coast, but they're bloody close. That was embarrassing. You can ask and say about all these defenders they got out. And yeah, they do. They're not that great either. CJ is probably the biggest out at the moment. Obviously, Sicily's played now, so embarrassing. And Will Day, two good outs, that's it. And I don't think this changes much of this margin or the way they play. Two important players, but not by this length of the margin. They embarrass themselves to the length of the, the length of the Flemington straight. Embarrassing as well. Five goals down or whatever, five to one at quarter time goal-wise. Just embarrassing. Melbourne aren't in the greatest of form at the moment. Uh, and you just be embarrassing. Nick Watson, I just think he needs to tone it down a little bit. Just a bit carried away at the moment. Just calm it down, Nick. Um, but, yeah, embarrassing. John Newcomb does all right all the time. And Sicily played better this week. He improved off his shit performance last week, which he admitted to. Redmond and Co got onto him. And he's lucky he didn't get suspended. Sicily, I don't know how he got off for that. Wasn't complaining for Supercoach reasons. Um and I just wanted him to play against Hesseton, but against, uh, sorry, against Melbourne, but they were shit. They were embarrassing. I'm sure Sam Mitchell was not happy with how they played. And if he was happy with that, well, then he's got low expectations on him this year. Right, the next game we're going to go through, everyone, is Sydney and Essendon. 131 to 101. High scoring affair, 30 points. If you just looked at the margin, you're like, ah, oh, Essendon, well, uh, they were pretty crap. No, I... I but don't like them, as I've said, and I'll give them credit. They did really well for most part of the games. In patches, they were crap, but the Swans are the Swans at the SCG. Their games are always close. 
heat it up, Tom Papley and everything. But no, I just Essendon played well. Gresh, phenomenal, three goals, twenty five disposals, or so fantastic. Peter Wright, gotta give him credit too, to cop that shit, um, and then play the game out well. I think he kicked three off the top of my head. But regardless of how many goals he kicked, he definitely hit a couple after that incident. And I and I thought he held his own. And unfortunately for him and the club, he's going to be out for a while. Three weeks at least trumping all tomorrow. Now, what do you think Peter Wright will get? Comment down below and be realistic. What do you think the AFL will give him? Not your opinion. What do you think he'll get? Uh, but, yeah, the Swans, Rick Warner and Papley and Heaney, fantastic. Logan McDonald, will he leave the WA next year? We'll have to wait and see. That's always a watch your space. Uh, but, yeah, great win in the end for the Swans who dominated the last quarter. Gordon was good. Six goals, four to 5-3. So, I mean, they only really just won the last quarter. Good high-scoring affair, though, for them. Obviously, late in the third quarter, I think, was where it got for Essendon. Ballarat, 115-67, to 67, the Bulldogs over the Suns. Disappointing. The Suns lost it in the first quarter. There's always a breeze at Ballarat, but I feel that the other side, unlike other times in Ballarat, there wasn't a disadvantage on the other side. It's just the other side was just blowing a, a mile over the normal distance, but the other side was just pretty standard. There was a few rare balls late in the last quarter, watching this whole game. They only held up a little bit, but it depends on how high he kicked it, and it was only at the end of the game that happened. So no excuses. What else used the first quarter? Well, the Suns were better against, well, not against the win, but, you know, on the other side, that wasn't heavily favouring their goal in end in the third quarter when they kicked three or four in a row. So it showed, you know, you could score on that end, and they just didn't capitalise on the win. They kept bobbing it, and Liam Jones, like people get saying Liam Jones had a great game. Look, he wasn't a hack like he normally is, but they were just kicking to him. So is it him being good and positioning himself well or was just Gold Coast shit kicking it in? I think they were shit kicking it in. Just wasn't thing, just bombing it and hacking it, just hoping for the best. Ben King, I feel bad for him having the freaking bombarded triple team shit delivery. I'm sure Dimmer Hardwick would not be happy with that. And by the way, if the Suns make finals, it's not because of Hardwick. It's because of all the work Shuey Jew did to put this team in the position. You know, Hardwick's picking up the scraps just like Chris Scott did in 20, 2009, even though I don't like bringing up that stupid time. Rick, I'm pouring, bounce, topo crap. Um, but yeah, the Bulldogs wait me kick six, four in the first quarter. He was really good. I thought Oscar Baker did really well, kicking three and 19 as a sub late in the first quarter. He came on, or start of the second. I thought he did really well, Oscar Baker. Probably one of the best on the ground, to be honest. Um, Ed Richards, before he got concussed, he'll miss next week. Uh, David Swallow, I don't believe, has been suspended, and nor should he have been. It was just an unfortunate incident for Ed Richards, who unfortunately missed this week. Nick Coffield done his shoulder. Left shoulder, Rico, apparently not good for cough. Um, obviously missed the last two years mainly. He played some VFL. So John Ralph and Co. kept saying, oh, he's missed two years. No, he hasn't. He was playing VFL for chunks of last year and pieces, bits and pieces. So don't give me he hasn't played at all for two years. Bullshit. Um, yeah, shit from the Suns for the most part. Jed Waltz in his debut order didn't have the best stats. I thought he looked really well. His presence around the field, his run for a big man was bloody impressive. Um, and they got a great one there in Jed Walter. Remember the ring general? Gunter. His last name was Walter. Jed Walter. Good game. From Jed Walter in his debut game, despite not kicking a goal. Richmond 92, Adelaide 122. Again, a bit like Essendon, Richmond gave it to the power, and they really were up it for most of the game, and the Port's kicked away in the last. They were up by two goals at halftime, the Tigers, and Port got in front, and they kind of stayed in front. Not a huge margin, but then the last quarter, they pulled it on. Um, I think it was six goals the power might have got in the last quarter. Yeah, they did. Six goals, two. to two, three. Yeah. So the power got it done. Trav Boat, game for 50. Well done, Boki. Terrific career. You obviously will retire at the end of the year. Play about 365 games probably. So well done, Boki, on a terrific career when it does come to an end. He was all right. Around 15 disposal. I mean, he's not a big accumulator anymore. He's obviously fit towards the end of his career. Um, He did okay, I guess. Nothing special. Been in and out of the side with the sub last year. But obviously a, a career that should be recognised. And quite frankly, as I said earlier, did not get the public recognition as he bloody should have. The biased media carrying on sucking up to Nick Dacos and Bonham Pelly all week. Maybe if they stopped started, maybe if they stopped sucking off Nick Dacos and Marcus Bonham Pelly continuously day in and day out, they might have freaking realised that Travis Boak played his 350 of the bloody game. So he stopped sucking off two guys, and maybe you'd realise there's more plays with big milestones this week as well. Like, for example, this week, um, 
some big milestone games. Tom Hawkins. Congratulations to Tom Hawkins, who will play game 350. A big accomplishment there. Brody Smith will play game 250 this week. Tom Mitchell will play game 200, along with Jack Viney. So congratulations to those guys that have those milestones coming up and some guys are on 150 and more. So congratulations to all those players in that. I'm sure you won't hear the media talk about it. Maybe Fox will have Tom Hawkins because he's been on Fox plenty of times. But it's pathetic. The coverage about Travis Bogue was embarrassing that he didn't get it. Could you imagine the stick riding they give Dacos at 50 games and Bonapalli in general? God forbid when those guys get to 300 games. Whew, gee, the dick riding and cocksucking is going to be high. Like, I'm sorry. It's just embarrassing. Seriously. Um, but, yeah. Now, all right. Now, let's go to the next game. It was the final game of the round. Uh, Thunders was really good, too. And, by the way, Lefau, Lefau his first game on him. Seth Campbell thought it was really good for the Tigers. Uh, Butters did really well. Kane Farrell, and Liam Baker, and Todd Marshall. It's a good place for both teams. West Coast Gita, it's not spending much time. This giant spanked them as expected. 70 odd points. It was 65, 108 to 43. Jane Hunt was okay, but West Coast and McGovern and Duggan, as usual. Usual stuff. Elliot, you, you. One goal, 27 disposals. It was really good. Cogs, Harvey Thomas should get the rising stuff. He hasn't officially yet. Josh Kelly was good. Lockie Whitfield, Connor Iden. Kieran Briggs, 21 disposals, 34 hitouts. Tom Green, 34 hitouts. Uh, 34 disposals for Tom Green and six tackles, yeah. Um, but the best players in the game for the Giants. Jesse Hogan was good despite missing three or four goals. One three, I think, Jesse Hogan. Um, if he kicked straight, he could have kicked a bag as well. He missed a lot. Two goals, two. I thought he missed more than that, but anyway. So that's round two. All right. Now, let's go review a uh, preview the round three games to wrap us up this evening. Um, so let's preview the round three games. All right. So starting off Thursday night, Easter round, round three, Thursday night at, up at the Gabba. It's the winless Lions hosting the winless Pies. 7.30 Vic time. I'm going the Brisbane Lions here. Purely for because the, they're at home. We're going to the Brisbane Lions by five points. The next game we go through on Good Friday, Friday, 4.20 Vic time. It's North Melbourne hosting Carlton at Marvel Stadium. I'm going Carlton to win by 50 points, but get down there if you can. Donate to the Good Friday appeal and do all that type of stuff. I'm sure they would all appreciate it. And the Roos obviously put on a good show there every time they host it. The Good Friday appeal and the Good Friday event before the people they have at the game and all the Royal Children Hospital visits and stuff they do. It's really good and it's something they should be commended for and they really do really well, the Roos. And that stuff, or anyone does, but I mean, particularly North because they do it solely for the game. It's, you know, heavily focused on that more than the game sometimes. Uh, there is a night game in Perth at Optus Stadium. It is Frio hosting Adelaide, 7.30 big time at Optus Stadium. Interesting game to tip here. I'm going to go for the Crows by 10 points. No confidence on either side. Saturday, 4.20 at Marvel Stadium. It's the Bombers hosting my Saints at Marvel Stadium. 4.20 big time. I'm going for my Saints, of course, to win by 20 points. Essendon were good against Sydney for the most part. Saints to beat the reigning Premier. So I'm going to my Saints by 20 points. Dan Butler to come back in, as will Brad Crouch, replace the injured duo of Liam Henry and Mason Wood. Would those changes work? Yeah, let's see what I did there. Um, I think they would. Now, obviously, since it's Saints by 20 points, I'm confident in this one. 7.30, Saturday night at Adelaide Oval. It's Port Adelaide hosting the Demons. Port will get the win there, I think, by 10 points, but it'll be a bloody close one. Melbourne had, obviously, a good win against the Hawks, but it's the Hawks. But people, Melbourne fans carrying on saying top fours of that game. Pipe down, seriously. It's embarrassing. You're embarrassing yourself. Uh, Sunday at Marvel Stadium, the Bulldogs hosting July, uh, Bulldogs hosting the Eagles. One o'clock, Victorian time at Marvel Stadium on Sunday. I'm tipping the Bulldogs, but hey, the Eagles beat the bomb. Uh, the Bulldog Eagles beat the Bulldogs. That Marvel late in the year to, to knock the Bulldogs out of finals contention. Jamie Cripps, we love you still, mate. Ex Sainar kicked five, won us the game, got us into finals when we shouldn't have been in there the night before. If Adelaide didn't get robbed with Ben Keys against Sydney, yada, yada, yada. But the next day, Jamie Cripps said, oh, "I'll help you, Sainers, unlike the umpires." Um, and score review. And the in, in boundary umpire, Cole Langford was out of bounds. What the f is going on with these dumb umpires these days? 
boundary arm boss. They need glasses. You know they're sponsored by OPSM. Maybe they should be with spec savers because obviously the OPSM, OPSM contacts and glasses aren't working for them. Like, for God's sake, it's embarrassing. Cole Langford's one. Uh, there wasn't just the Higgins one. There was another one as well. It's just, it's just embarrassing. And how many dropping the balls are they not going to pay? Like, for God's sakes. Uh, but anyway, yeah, Bulldogs probably about 30 points, unfortunately. Hopefully the Eagles can upset them over again. Sunday, 4 p.m., big time in the MCG. It's the Tigers hosting the Swans. We're going to the Swans by 30 points. I think it'll be similar to the Port game. I think Sydney will be better throughout the game more than Port did. Final game on Easter Monday, 3.20. 3.20, Victorian time in the MCG. It's Hawks hosting Geelong. Unfortunately, I think Geelong will win by 40 points um, here. Now, my final thoughts are simply this. You want me on Cameo, head to cameo.com forward slash Cooper G. Want me to roast a friend? Wish someone happy birthday. Anything at all, cameo.com forward slash Cooper G. And if you know any AFL, AFLW plays, any up and coming draftees, and you're on the podcast and the Gold King Challenge or an interview, or anyone who plays in the State Leagues, Waffle W, Sample W, etc., and you'd love someone on the podcast and interview, Gold King Challenge, send me a message on Instagram, AFL Info Live, and we'll get that sorted for you all. There's the Instagram name there. If you want to send me a message now? We really appreciate it. If you know someone, or you just want to see if I'm interested in getting someone on, send me a message and we'll go from there. Thank you all for watching this episode of Keep It the Script. Until the next video, take care. The most important thing of all to remember is go to the Saints and, of course, acknowledge me, the one and all aboard the Filippo train. Then, now, forever, together. Go Saints.